Far Cry 5 has been a true delight to play and complete. The only upside I have is that my journey in the campaign has come to an end. It's most certainly one of those titles that has been consistent in delivery while making several improvements with each installment, adding to the great momentum they have with this franchise. The game has been an action-packed, story-driven and addictingly fun adventure in the beautiful Hope County, Montana, where you play a key role in the local resistance who's trying to return order to the city that has fallen into the hands of extremely frightening, batshit crazy Christian cultist zealots. The cultists are led by John Seed, the main baddie of the game, and three other main villains who make up the four tyrannical bosses you conflict with. The story is one that pits the player against deeply dogmatic and religious zealots that claim a particular prophecy to be imminent, especially with your arrival. But it's not as simple as that, as the story is quite deep and thought-provoking. It does not exclude the player's actions from being observed, judged, and reflected on. Much like immersive sims, the villains and certain characters explain their philosophies and outlook, so the villains in the game are quite complex. Don't let the religious zealots label fool you into thinking you have a dumbed down foes in this installment. You will find grains of truth in their beliefs and that's what makes the plot a bit frightening when thinking about it. Despite some of the serious themes behind the story, the game does have its lighthearted moments at times and can get quite funny with its self-awareness of American culture and with the random moments produced by the fun and chaotic elements of the game as you delve into regions that are overrun by cultists. <laughs> America, fuck yeah! This is what we do down the south! Before you start to take over a region, you'll find the place littered with cultists, which kind of adds surprises on your trips. What the fuck? Are you? I don't need a grapple down. Yeah. <laughs> okay, now I know why they put that grapple there. I should have used the grapple to get down. Gameplay. The gameplay evidence is exemplary mastery and intuition by the developers over their craft. This is because the fifth installment has much better polish to the Far Cry formula that most of us love already. The gameplay is so seamless that your journey to objectives, be it main missions or side quests of any sort, is filled with action and small mini tasks that you may want to pull over and do real quick. You can liberate captured townsfolk, and by doing so get them to join your cause, seize or destroy cultists' property, or various other methods of disrupting the leader's reign in the region. Those mini-events will also contribute to your overall progress bar in taking over the regions. It's designed so well that you get the completionist coming out of you, and you simply can't help but get them done. Just navigating around the world and dealing with whatever arises feels like a big reward. Each region, by the way they're quite big, is under the reign of a boss, and you can do a variety of things to work away at reducing their hold on that particular region. The game does not force you to do a particular thing you don't want to do, in fact, you can do the bosses in any order that you want. Nearly every optional event that you take off might contribute to this progress bar, and as you fill up that progress bar, you then get an interaction with a somewhat pissed off villain where more interesting story is exposed. The world was designed so well that you really do get the feeling that you're playing in a real world given how laborious the visual, audio and world design is in this game. You can see people going about their business, or the cruel world of the wildlife, or villains trying to spread their cultist ways around the region. Navigating around while on main quests or doing side quests just felt like there was a huge playground of fun, and the game rarely got boring because of this. There was plenty to do on land, air and the rivers, and lots of opportunities for exploration as well, as all Far Cry fans know how fun liberating outposts and seeing your people move in after is. The developers have clearly listened to feedback as well because one of the quality of life improvements that the game jokingly parades is the removal of having to climb several towers in the game to reveal hotspots in a particular region. Here, you do it once. I know what you're thinking, and no. I ain't gonna have you climbing towers all over the county for me, so don't worry. Also, try not to fall from up there. <laughs> That's 
The need for skinning animals and farming materials for consumables has been toned down, and instead you can skin it super quick and sell it for lucrative amounts of cash. You can create and customize your own character too, and pick your gender, which is something you couldn't do before. There are a decent amount of customization as well for yourself, your apparel and any air, land or sea vehicles that you purchase, and you can buy them quite early on as well, so getting shortcuts is quite accessible early on in the game providing that you sell junk loot. There is progression in this game by way of talent, much like the previous ones, but with cool additions, especially now that you have a companion system where you can pick a companion to travel and fight with you as you go around Montana. One of my favorite companions is Cheeseburger, the bear. Yes, you can have a fucking bear as a companion who plays like a tank and mauls the shit out of anyone that tries to mess with you. The companion system is a welcome addition, and I loved getting the perk that allowed me to have two of them at once. Companions come with a set of abilities to assist your playthrough. They also add their own personality to your journey with their own set of dialogues and behaviours. I found myself choosing both animal companions because I just love seeing what they do. Get him, cheeseburger. Oh shit! World stop! For those of you that want a more stealthy or tactical approach to your combat, you can choose Boomer, for example, um, which sniffs out and reveals the positions of enemies. But they all have their own unique abilities, and it's quite surprising given the variety. I mean, you can even have some companions that will be uh, perched in a helicopter or a plane, giving you aerial support. So you have options there. But the animal companions, for me, uh, gave me a lot of uh, laughing out loud moments, and I've got some of them here. <laughs> oh shit, get him cheeseburger. Get him. Get him. Wait, no. No. Oh fuck you, man. Fuck. Let's go. Let's go. But it gets better, guys, because if you don't want to use the companions, you have the option of co-op. But ah, it's like the previous co-ops where you just do co-op design missions. Wrong. You can do the entire campaign co-op. Mind fucking blown. The companion system works well. Much like Ghost Recon, you can now instruct stage by stage if you want the companions to assist with your stealth approach, if you are that kind of player. Overall, the gameplay was created by developers that have demonstrated an awareness that the game is a game and that the quality of life or avoiding boring or annoying repetitive aspects with players of a sandbox game ought to be dealt with. And I have to say I can't recall being bored when playing this campaign. If anything, there were a few issues I had with the AI, but that's just about it. I'm sure you're real. Who'd have thought the old prison would become a hold there for the resistance? <laughs> Your sheriff seems to know what he's doing though. Tracy, I've seen around. Mostly keeps to herself. And Virgil, well, he's Virgil. I don't care much for politicians. Do what you can to help him out. I'll be in touch. Let me the, let me the... Get to work, Rook. Time, time for me to accept this mission, but I can't accept this mission. Open the door! Open the door! Get the door! Get me! No. Oh. 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 Don't shoot the car, man. Don't light up the car. Don't light up. The car. Don't, light up the car. don't light up the car, man. Don't light. Oh. Oh. The arcade mode. Now, for the creatives among you, arcade mode can be played online or solo, and it has a series of player and dev created maps getting you to do a variety of things. If you are creative and got the time to pick it up, you can even create and submit your own map to be played by the community. The multiplayer is a cool feature to have, but I doubt this will pick up as I tried queuing for a while to play with the group, and it didn't find the game at all. 
I would suggest trying to do this with a pre-made or, or, or friends on your friends list. But that being said, the few maps I did play solo were quite interesting, fun and a chill event that you can do if you just want to get stuck in doing objectives or with your friends. But the main selling point here is the campaign and especially now that you can play it entirely co-op. Music. You know the sound and music in the game is good when you end up looking for it in your Spotify. And I did just that. There are several different music albums that comprise the soundtrack of this game, as it's got a mix of genres. It goes from classic rock, country, and your confederate flag-waving hillbilly bangers, to all-time US hits and music that you would typically hear at a church event. My favourite melodies were from Far Cry 5 soundtrack done by Hammock, a well-known to American ambient post-rock band from Nashville, Tennessee. You have beautiful atmospheric music that is combined with orchestral arrangements, electronic beats, piano and droning guitar. And the music from Hammock most certainly enhanced the drama in the game and gave the game scenes extra emotional resonance. That being said, that isn't to say that no improvements can be made. Of course not, the game is not perfect. But the fact that once again, I find myself enjoying the sequels to this franchise even more now with better design choices makes me a happy gamer. And for me to see a fun game getting better with each installment really does make my dick move. 5 out of 5, whether it is now or later, you definitely need to add this to your library.